Yeah, ready to fight now. <laughs> ready to fight. It's, um, that gets that stage where you've gone over the game plan a million times, for it in your head physically, um, and it's you want to put it into practice now. And uh, you know, sparring and everything else you can do with, with opponents who can mimic Michelle Lara, but no one's going to be as like Michelle Lara is himself. So. You know, I just want to get in there now and uh, and go to work. And at Headley, twenty thousand leads leads people. <laughs> yeah. How much are you looking forward to getting back in front of them? Because it's nearly been two years, hasn't it, since you were in front of a, a home crowd? This is it, and, and time moves very very quickly. I mean, two years two years ago, like I say, I were a world champion, and I just been on run, three successful defenses. And uh, last time I boxed in front of a crowd, it was a hell of, a, hell of an occasion. You know, we had um, we had the drummers there and went on to, knock, to coach out in two rounds and just unbelievable atmosphere. Um, you know, and the year before that, would you know, obviously with the time I won the world title against Selby. So having boxed last back in February, you know, it was it was it was a weird setup, a weird scenario, but um, yeah. I certainly can't wait to be back in in front of the noise, in front of the in front of the energy that the crowd bring. And have you allowed yourself to think about what might be next? If if you went on on Saturday, have you kind of looked down the line or? Yeah, yeah, a massive a massive cheeseburger, a massive <laughs> cheeseburger. That, <laughs> that's the only thing I'm really thinking about. I know there's uh, potential other fights could happen, but. You know, I'm just pushing that to pushing that out of my head. I've got to win on Saturday, and that's uh, that's what my attention is. That and cheeseburgers. That, that's it. What do you think about the featherweight division at the minute? Do you feel it's getting pretty exciting again? I know um, Lee Woods being mandated to fight Michael Conlon. Think things like that. Home on home shores and abroad. It's it's pretty exciting times, isn't it? Yeah, it is exciting time. I mean, um, certainly domestically, there's a lot of. Um, big fights happening over the year. Obviously, a few weeks back, we had um, Kid and Jazza fighting for the world title. Um, like I say, Conlon and um, and Lee Wood. Um, it'd be interesting to see what happens with the champions uh, overseas. You know, the your Gary Russells and your Los Santa Cruzes, because they seem to be inactive. I know that Navarrete has been wanting to be uh, to be out more. Um, but yeah, Gary Russell Jr. and, and Leo Santa Cruz have been, both been very quiet. So it be interesting to see what happens with them. But to answer your question, British boxing and, and the British heavyweight scene has uh, been very good for the public. Thanks very much, Josh. Best luck. I'll yes, pass you Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. If we go to Chris Ridgeway next, please. Josh, how are we, mate? We okay? Hi, Chris. Good to see you. Yeah, cheers. Um, Want to jump straight into camp questions? Uh, how how has camp been different this time around? Coming up against uh, Mauricio Lara again? Hey, well, it's um, it's not been as long. That is that is uh, that is one thing what stands out straight away. I think last time I think I had about six month camp because they, you know dates kept on moving and fights. You know we didn't know where we were with the pandemic and and we didn't have um, a, a nailed on date. So I was just training more or less from last August to you know February the 13th um, so that's not a bad thing to keep in the gym but when you're actually in camp and you're preparing like you've got a fight coming up in, in a few weeks time then uh, it does chip away at you um, so yeah I, I'm listen I'm always fit I'm always strong um, going into a fight with someone who's already boxed there's been a lot more technical work going in um, so that's one thing what really stands out but um, you know as always, train hard and, uh, you know, fit for 12 rounds. Um, I know this question is going to come uh, around quite a lot, but the, the fans obviously back this the, this time around, and it's not just any set of fans either, it's the home set of fans and, and a noisy bunch at that as well. What difference does it make as a fighter? Like, what what difference are you anticipating? Oh, it's massive, man. I mean, um, I've said this many times, and I'll probably bore myself, you know, saying it, but I'm, people will say they can't get in ring with you, and I know that. But it's what they do for myself. Like it's the energy what they bring, you know, the, the noise and the passion. Now, if 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 the 
um, if they do manage to um, take an opponent out of his game plan, then that's a bonus. But I don't think about it that. I think about what they can do for me. You know, it's just how my mentality approaches the fight, knowing that people are going to be there and the noise, like I said, that they're going to bring. You know, it just it makes me switch on, tune up and get that adrenaline flowing, you know, through the body. So um, it's going to be massive having them there. And, uh, you know, I do like having my own crowd. And, you know, if you fought to fight abroad, they'd follow me there as well, if they're allowed. Yeah. So uh, we, we, if I, like I say, if, you know, late stages of my career, I do fight over in the States, I will have a no more from home. So um, they are fantastic. They are fantastic. Final one for me, just on the Leeds front. Fellow Leeds, although more, more of an adopted hometown fighter, uh, Ebony Bridges joins you on the card. What's it like having Ebony on the card, being a, another Leeds fan? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's nice. Obviously, she um, she represents the club very well. You know, she's uh, she talks about a lot about Leeds. But I think more than anything, it's, it's having the actual homegrown Leeds lads on there. You know, you, you like to Jack Payson. Yeah. You like to Molly Wright, who's making his debut. Brandon Stansfield. Opie Price, you know, these are actually, I mean, I'm, Opie shared a video over there on his social media with about 14 or, or, or maybe even younger, and I'm giving him a, a, a trophy at his, at his club show down in Unslick. So, um, you know, seeing like them guys come on and, and progress, it's a it's, 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 it's proud moment for me because when I'm, when it's all said and done for me, I want to be going to the arenas and stadiums and watching them headline. Yeah. Well, there with world titles and big title fights, you know, and uh, and you know, hopefully, I've been an inspiration to to them boys who were fighting on the undercard and say, you know, I was just an average lad off at a state and look what I achieved. You boys can do it as well. So, um, I think that means more to me than uh, listen, I love Ebony, I think she's fantastic, and uh, you know, she's uh, represent the, the, the football club very well but yeah the homegrown talent it means uh, means a lot to me to have them on there top man all the best for it mate cheers Chris thanks Chris if we go to Josh from Leeds live next please well hey Josh how are you doing hey there mate yeah I'm sorry I'm struggling to get it off mute how are you doing yeah there you are you okay mate I'm not bad thank you um just, just firstly, uh, your old nemesis Carl Frampton has said ahead of this fight that um, yeah. it, it's you that's under pressure this time round. Do you yeah. feel the same? Yeah, <laughs> I always feel the pressure. It don't matter like any kind of fight. There's always pressure on it because I've said it many a times. Boxing's like any other sport. Um, sorry, it's not like any other sport. You, you can't have fox the pups. You know, nothing's ever scheduled and. Um, it's not like tournaments are scheduled you have to keep on winning in order for your career to progress um, so yeah I know I know that if I slip up then I aren't looking at world titles and things like that anymore you know it's, it's been a long time to, to climb up, back up and um, now I've been in the sport 11 years so there is always there's always pressure there's always pressure and um, especially like I say fighting a big audience that does bring pressure even though it's an advantage um but we're thriving for it that's what we that's why we do it and um obviously it's your first your first time preparing for a fight on the back of a defeat last time out how does that affect your mindset and what what difference does it make to you if any um obviously i i, I know what i know what to expect i know what marisha brings i know i know he's um I know about the power in his in his, in his punches. Um, I know about how he moves and um, how, how he's going to approach it. So obviously that's been uh, helpful in the way that I, I can you know visualize it. It's been helpful in the way that we prepare for our game plan. Um, so that's been a bit different, and uh, I think more than anything, having coming off a lot of injuries has you know taken the time to to get back to. Um, 100% recovery that took a bit of time but um, we're flying we're ready to go now we're ready to go so uh, it's just all being said and done get the results done and uh, put it into practice on Saturday Brilliant thanks very much Josh I'll hand you over good luck this weekend Cheers Josh thanks mate Thank you Josh if we go to Jeremy Herridge's next please Hi, Josh. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Um, I got on a couple minutes late, so apologies if I'm asking any repeat questions here. 
But when you go back and you watch the Mauricio Laura fight for, yeah. for the first time, what was your reaction to it? What the fucking hell were you doing? What were you doing, Josh, man? That's that was my initial reaction. <laughs> Excuse me for my uh, language there, yeah, but yeah, just um, just disappointed with myself more than anything. Do you know? Um, seeing the mistakes, um, and and Mauricio capitalised on them. He, he'd seen them as well, and he, and, he, and he took advantage of them mistakes what I was making. So um, yeah, when when uh, when I watched it back, it was just the mistakes. How 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 open I was, you know. Like, just, yeah, that's it. Now, looking at, you know, going into this fight, are you considering it kind of evaluative, um, questioning, um, is there, is it something that he did in the fight to win it, or, or is there a, a decline in, in, in maybe your abilities? Are, you, are these thoughts running through your head, and are you trying to find answers to that? Well, you know, Jeremy, you're making it sound like I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, no, you're younger than me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm um, like, I was thinking about this myself, you know, I thought to myself, uh, have I had my peak? You know, have I, have I, had, I had my peak, you know, 2017, 18, 19, fantastic years for me, for the people who had beat. And um, I had momentum in my stride. And obviously I've been a victim to, of, of the COVID having to set out for, you know, 15 months then back in, but it did it did take away from momentum. I mean, like two years ago, I was looking towards um, fights with uh, Shakur Stevenson, Gary Russell, Leo Santa Cruz, and we'll just try to get them over the line, get them announced, and uh, and it could it couldn't have been done. And then obviously the pandemic happened, and you know, I had to wait even a bit longer. But um, I don't think it's it's too much of a, a decline of what happened to myself. Um, I feel fit. I'm, I'm like on paper, all my all my all my records and everything else, I'm fitter, stronger than ever I've been. You no, know, I'm experienced. Um, I just think like there were a few things on the night that what just wasn't right, and uh, and Mauricio took advantage of him, and simple as that. Got it, Josh. Thank you so much, and best of luck to you. Cheers, Jeremy. Have a good one, Matt. Thanks, Jeremy. If we go to Jim Conlon for his question next, please. Hi, Josh. Uh, you mentioned there about getting yourself back into the spotlight again in terms of the, the boxing scene. Uh, do you almost feel like you're having to try and reinvent yourself all over again? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit. Um, certainly when I see some of the articles what going out, it's like, fucking hell, have people, <laughs> have, have people just forgot about Josh Warren and what he's done over the years. You know, I've I've been headlining shows and and fighting big names since 2013. You know, it's like all of a sudden, all these young lads who've, who've had the, the bumps and the mistakes throughout the career, no one's remembering what they've done. They're just seeing what they're doing now. So, I guess it's just the nature of the sport. But um, I think I'd like to put like by Saturday night, all, that'll be all put to bed, and uh, I'll be back where I was. Cheers, Josh. Best of luck. Thanks, Jim. Short and sweet. Thanks, Jim. If we go to Steve from Boxing UK next, please. Hi, Josh. It's Steve from Boxing UK. Hi, Steve. Hi, Josh. Josh, can I ask a personal one? Um, go on. Obviously, the last time out was your first defeat. Away from the boxing ring, how did you take that personally, mate? Um, I don't know, mate. I don't know. To be honest with you, Steve, it, personally... It's a good question. It's a good question. Uh, I just took it as it's, it's happened and, and, and we move on. As simple as that. You know, there were a few times when it he, he got me down a, a little bit because I, I was frustrated with myself because, you know, fights that I should have should have happened after obviously didn't. Um, but aside from that, the support has been absolutely fantastic from those who are around me, those who, who follow my journey. And they still stick by me, so nothing else really has changed, you know. My missus still loves me. <laughs> my kids still love me, so, you know, happy days. Good man. Um, the other thing I want to know that, Josh, is when, when you suffer a defeat that on paper looks quite comprehensive, yeah. do you in your heart of hearts know what you need to do to turn that around? Because 
a lot of people think that was such a comprehensive defeat that he's a lot of people's favourite this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, we know what we need to do, and uh, I think I'm, I think I'm beyond uh, that. You know, looking into who's underdog, who's, who's favourite, and stuff like that. Listen, we know what we need to do, and um, you know, I've been about. I've said it many times. I've been about the sport a long time, so um, you know, I've, I've been massively written off loads and loads of time. It's not new to me. It's about what we do on the night, and uh, you know, I'd like. I've I've already got an idea of what people are going to be saying after. Oh, he's back in it is, and you know, listen, I've just got to concentrate on what I need to do, and then that's it, and uh, I'll be victorious in that. Good man. I know, I know everybody has mentioned the fans, but we, we were ringside for the Takush fight, well, and, it, and it is mental, isn't it? Just, yeah. just what, <laughs> what does it give you? It's just, it's just, it's just a different energy. It's just a different energy, and I've, I've learned how to to be to use that energy to an advantage. You know, um, <laughs> there's times when it can have an effect on the opponents as well. For instance, when I box Carl Frampton. Every time he went forward, his fans went nutty. But that helped, that played into my hands because I wanted him to do that. And uh, then he got a bit too wild. Whereas when, that, when my fans were going crazy, um, you know, it can get into their heads. But more than anything, it's just the energy that they bring me. It's just like, in, it, just make us, it makes me sharpen up, makes me uh, stay disciplined and um, put on a performance for them. Be last one for me, Josh. Have you got a path what happens if you win? And God forbid, have you got a path of what you're going to do if you get beat again? That's a, that's a nasty question. That's Dave. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I, I, I only see myself winning. I only see myself winning. And that's it. And, uh, you, you know, journey continues with Josh Warrington on Saturday, believe me. Good man. Josh, best of luck at the weekend, mate. Take care. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Steve. If we go to Greg Cook next, please. Hi Josh, hope you're well mate and thanks for uh, having a quick chat with me with uh, BBTV. Um, I know we've covered a lot about the fans, I know we've covered a lot about um, you know, the fight itself, but two points that have, have jumped out for me from the first fight were a few points that went under the radar, number one being the heart that you showed in that fight and the chin that you showed in that fight. And the second point is... A lot of people made a big deal, I think, about the fact that it was at an arena, there were no fans. And it was you that took the brunt of that. Now, Maurizio Lara has never fought in front of 20,000 people before, and you have got that experience. Do you feel people should be looking at that a little bit more, and should he be concerned about that? That's, that's a brilliant point, mate, to be fair. And, uh, I pre appreciate the, 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 um, the first bit you said as, as well, I say our our fucking more or less concourse from round four onwards, and it, it still took him another five rounds to get me out there. And he landed a lot of clean shots in that in that sense. Um, I know this time he won't get as many shots off of me. I can guarantee that. Um, and and secondly, yeah, it might be some what what he may have overlooked. Obviously, everyone's talking about how it can be a, a massive benefit for me. But like you say, he's 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 never walked out in front of that now. Will it bother him? Will it not? We we won't know until the, until the night. But there there's factors to deal with. Like I, I do believe the press conference and weigh-in are going to be public, and um, and my fans make the they show the passion. They make them they make themselves heard, and uh, you know even if it takes one or two percentage off you as you walk into the ring, you know you get a bit distracted and you you start looking at people's faces. It's an advantage to me every time. So um, maybe they've prepared for it. I don't know. But uh, like I say, I know much of a massive boost it can give me. Yeah. And the fact that you fought at Allen Road, you know, you fought at your club stadium and, and you've got that experience. And yeah. If he's coming over here thinking, oh, it's going to be the exact same as last time, then it's quite foolish, really. Because like you say, it's not only the fight night itself, it's you've got 20,000 Leeds fans yeah. and they're going to be there at the weigh-in. They're going to be, and they're there for you. So I just think if he's coming over thinking same mentality, people can talk all they want about how dangerous this fight might be for you, which it is. But the mentality that he needs to have needs to be right up there as well because you've got 20,000 fans backing you. 100%. And I'm, I'm unbeaten in stadiums. <laughs> I'm unbeaten in Leeds. 
Um, so yeah, listen, it's it's one of the things that I I don't look at it too much on how how they are going to be affected because I, I I have done in the past and I've made a mistake of thinking that some of the opponents are going to get um, washed up with the the atmosphere and stuff. But then in the same breath, some of the opponents where I thought might be a little bit more steely, I've crumbled on it. He's only he's only a young lad and like like you say he's not boxed in a, in a crowd like this and certainly won't box in a crowd so aggressive and and, and so passionate so it'd be interested to see how we how we handles it and uh, yeah it's going to be a lot different from you know what we boxed in from the last time yeah well not only will you have the city of Leeds behind you mate but you'll have the whole of the UK behind you so thanks for your time today Josh thanks Greg appreciate that mate all, so the, very best, all the very best for Saturday cheers cheers buddy. Thank you, Greg. Um, this is just a reminder for any Mexican journalists we have on the call. If you'd like to ask Josh a question, we do have a translator here called Kieran. So just let me know if there's any questions there. Um, just moving on, we've got Lyndon Dixon, please, for your question. Hola, buenos días. Um, eh, quería eh, decirle a los, los medios españoles si quieren hacer una pregunta a, a, a Josh Warrington. Uh, tienes un traductor aquí, por, por si acaso quieres hacer la pregunta. Así que pueden hacer la pregunta a Dan. Gracias. Thank you, Kieran. Um, if you go to Lyndon Dixon, please. Uh, hello, Josh. How are you, mate? Hi, uh, Lyndon. You OK? Yeah, I'm great, mate. Um, I know you're going to be getting this question all week, but um, 20,000 of the Leeds faithful. It's been a long time coming for you, mate, after the last, you know, the, the defeat. But um, how much of a boost do you think that can be for you on Saturday night? It's going to be a massive boost. It's going to be a massive boost. You know, it's it's already started. Um, I still, I still deliver tickets, you know, and, and 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 when people are telling me how much they're looking forward to it, it just gives me a drive. I know they're going to be there on the fight night. They're going to spend their hard earned money on tickets being there. They spend their hard earned money on an haircut, a new shirt, a, you know, a few pints and that. And it's like they're coming to support you. So you've got to make sure that you you're training, you're prepared as as much as you can be, you know, for them people. And um, you know, I know. On Saturday night, they've been bringing their energy. They've been bringing the noise, and uh, now I use that energy. I use that energy, and uh, like I say, it just it just does something to me. It just does, does something to me mentally. You know, we're there to entertain. We're there to put on a performance, um, and uh, and I know that with that fans back, the adrenaline will be coursing through the veins as they walk into the ring, and I think that was the difference last time. Uh, sticking with the fans, it's been mentioned earlier, but I almost hoping that that um that crazy atmosphere can get under his skin. Um, listen, if if, if it does, it's a bonus, but you know, I, I don't look too much into that. Like I say, I wouldn't like to be um, I wouldn't like to be an opponent walking out to him. You know the, <laughs> you know, listen, we we we're respectful, but when you're against us, we're not the friendliest the bunch. So um, you know, it's it's going to be one of them. If if he, if he if he does get no skin, then it's an advantage to me. If he don't, then I like I say, I know how much it gives me a boost. Yeah, and um, you were the obvious favourite last time out, but it seems well, definitely in the bookies anyway. It seems a bit more split. But I just was wondering, after the loss, has camp and um, preparations changed much from last time? Yeah, uh, pr pretty much. So I mean, the fight was only announced like. Four and a half weeks notice, five weeks notice. So, um, you know, want to there won't really much a game plan going into it. Just a case of just get the fight won. Whereas this one would treat like any other opponent who had fight faced previously, where there's you know game plans and and, and shots were worked on, and movements were worked on. So, yeah, it's been a bit more specific for this one, and uh, I think you'll see that on Saturday. Thanks, Josh. Cheers, London. Um, just moving on, Kieran, if, I know we've got a couple of questions here from the Mexican outlet, so if you wanted to take the lead on this section. Yes, no worries. Um, so I've got a question here from Iñaki, Josh, who asks, um, do you think a victory here would also represent a big victory for, for Matchroom, given that they've lost quite a few fights recently to Mexican boxers? <laughs> yeah. Um... First and foremost, Karen, I thought you were Spanish, but <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I think I think so, mate. Um, obviously, I'm, rep I'm re representing Leeds boxing, representing myself, representing UK boxing, representing Matchroom. So, listen, I know Matchroom is worldwide now, but 
Yeah, I guess so. Puts uh, puts us back onto a, a level score, doesn't it? Um, and we've got to got to start clawing it back. I think we've dominated uh, world boxing in the last few years, but you know, like I said, there's been a few upsets with the boys, you know, from Mexico and from all around the world coming over and um, getting some results. So yeah, I need to win. Need to start fighting back. I'll just translate that back. Um, sí, uh, primeramente. Um... Creo que Boy representa, representando solamente, no solamente a Matchroom, sino Leeds, eh, Boxing aquí en el Reino Unido y también en el mundo. Pero obviamente la empresa de Matchroom es muy grande y tenemos que igualar un poco eh, el marcador, ¿no? Porque hay muchos boxeadores que han venido aquí y han hecho, han hecho un gran sorpresa. Así que, primeramente, eh, nosotros sí hicimos muy bien el, el Boxing aquí en el Reino Unido y han habido algunas sorpresas. Así que vamos a, a ver si vamos a igualar un poco las cosas. Okay, let me just double check. I think there's another question that came through. Very well, lovely, lovely to listen to that, Kate. I tell you, well, lovely to listen to that. You could read me bedtime stories, mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the other one. There was one. Um, I think that's it, to be honest, Dan. I don't think there's any more questions. I think it was just a, a long-winded yes. one. So it looks like we have a question from um, Erika Montoya. Okay. Erika, if you just take yourself off mute um, on the button. Sorry. That's all right. Hi to everyone. Nice to meet you, Josh. Uh, Hello, what did you learn? <laughs> what did you learn about this fight with Lara? Um, the last time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I learned that uh, I can't stop punches with my chin. Um, <laughs> even having having a good chin, you know, it, it's it's not the best protection for uh, stopping punches. So, yeah, it just, and 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 I also learned that um, never. It's just well, I more than really learned, but just give me a reminder that I can you can never take anybody for granted, especially in this sport. It's, it's certainly not a tickling competition, you know, you can get hurt, anybody can hurt you. So, um, and I will never ever, as long as I carry on boxing, underestimate an opponent. What are the adaptations you have to make for this second contest with Lara? Um, adaptations, I think the mindset has to be right and um, I think I have to just box the way that I know I can box like I say I think I just got a little bit good last time and uh, I'm looking for an early night but not too worried about what was coming back um, I know that I'm always fit I'm always strong um, but yeah there's just a few little tweaks that we've done I don't want to give too much of a game plan away but a few little tweaks to be done to, to get the victory on the night Thank you very much. Thank you, Erika. Thank you, Erika. If you go to Jonathan Nagioff, your question, please. Hi, Josh. How you doing? Hi, mate. You okay? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, see those paintings behind you? Uh, your yeah. wins over Selby and Frampton. Yeah. In some ways, does this feel, I know it's not a world title fight, but does this feel on a par with those fights, given this is your chance of redemption and everything that happened last time? Yeah, I think so, man. I think so. It's like every fight is, every next fight is your biggest fight. And uh, obviously the way that this one's been built, um, you know, aside from the fight itself, it's one of the biggest fights that, you know, to happen since, um, you know, since the pandemic. You know, it's a hell of an undercard. But yeah, going back to the fight itself, obviously, it's, it's redemption. It's 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 um it's a rematch and 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 yeah, mate. It does really feel like there's a there's a lot on the line. So uh, I'm treating it like it's one of them massive nights. Not treating it like oh, it's just it's just Michelara. You know, he's he's a massive. He's become a big name in my head in, in my life. So yeah, it's um you know do the business as that day. We might have to have another picture up here with uh, me and Mauricio. And just lastly, is sort of the mental preparation key for this fight? Obviously, last time you just vacated the IBF title. You wanted the Kanju fight, didn't happen. And then you fought someone who was at the time unknown. Yeah. Um, now you're heading in knowing all about him. You fought him and this is the only fight you've been thinking about. Is that is that key for you, do you think? 100%, mate, 100%. I think that there would be a case of like, oh, just get him done and go home. Get him done, go home and, uh, and get on with the next one. And uh, obviously paid price for that, you know. So uh, this time round, 
all my attention all camp has been about Michelle Lara and uh, and that would be the difference on the on the night you know the way the way that I approach it mentally um like you said I know what it'll be so it'll be different good luck Josh appreciate it thank you Jonathan Cheers. and lastly we've got Tom Gray from the ring magazine thanks Tom hey Josh how you doing Tom how are you good good mate um first of all um, you're unbeaten as a pro for 12 years um from what i've seen since the uh, the setback you've dealt with it emotionally has that been just for the cameras how difficult has it been to to deal with the the loss the first professional loss of your career um i, I think i touched on this uh, a few weeks back like i am for a for a while it didn't really bother me like initially after the fight because i had so many physical injuries um you know i, I come out the I come out the fight with a fair few injuries, and normally, the the the, the blanket of uh, of winning covers them injuries up. But um, yeah, that they the the injuries were a distraction um, to the to the mental side of it. And then when my injuries recovered, and physically I was okay, then mentally it started to bother me. You know, it's like, shit, what's happened? I'm fucking number one in the world. Ring magazine ranks number one. Box rate ranks number one. All of a sudden, I've just disappeared out of the fucking top five. Now I've just, it's all come crashing down. I don't even know when I'm going to be next out. I'm meant to be fighting for other world titles and out with a man above all of these other fighters who are coming through. And now it's like, the, I've been relegated, not just one division, three divisions. And, it, and that's, what it, that's what it felt like. And it gets to a stage where you think, you know, what's going to happen? But then my mindset became, well, do something about it. Do something about it. You're in control. You're on destiny. You need to do something about it. So, yep. um, you know, I think he were for a few weeks made it made what up my ass, and I was a bit a little bit down. But then, like I say, I had a word with myself, and uh, and uh, I was all right then. And um, everyone, you know, that was watching the fight, or I won't say everyone, but most of the people um, were essentially saying um, that. You didn't appear yourself even before you were hurt in that fight. Um, you still had success in the fight, but you, you didn't look anywhere close to being the fight racing against Selby or Frampton. What major differences, and I'm not just talking about mentally, but what differences do you see developing in this fight that will be completely different from the, the Josh Warrington that, that uh, we've seen the last time? Just the approach, mate. Just the approach. I just, um, like I said, last time out, I just I didn't give Marisha or Lara the credit. And um yeah, I I'm I'm know I you know annoy myself like daily with that. I've could annoy myself that I didn't give him the credit. You no, know, I should have uh, been wary of what could potentially come back. And even at the times in the first few rounds, I should have picked up on that as well. But I just still ignored it and thought I'd just blast him out there and uh you know, because I've I've over the last few years <clears throat> Such being a dominant force physically, and uh, you know taking taking people taking people's souls early, you know like say Selby Frampton. I mean Frampton two rounds. It's the fight was more like done after two rounds, you know. But um, I think that was the that the difference. Um, I didn't do that, or maybe I, I did that too cocksure last time, and uh, I know that because that approach can't it can't last. You know, yeah. even with, with fighters who. Fighters who I've known about were feared. I'm, I'm wary. I'm wary. But with um, with Lara, I wasn't. I didn't give a fuck, and I paid price for it. And do you? Sorry, just to bolt on. Then do you do you foresee a much smarter technical approach this time, rather than trying to like gut check the fight? Um, not so much technical. Just the, the just the case of uh, a little bit just more aware. If that makes sense, uh, yeah. I'm still aware of myself, just aware about everything what you know could come back and aware of what I'm throwing. Yeah. I don't know what I'm coming from last week round here. Do you know what I mean? It's like just everything needs to be a bit more sharper. Thank you very much.